Hey, it's Steve. Well, I recorded the following video about a week and a half ago, and boy, the world has changed. And I mean, the, the content of the video was a prediction about what the world's gonna look like with respect to aviation in 10 years, and er, in the year 2030, and already so much has changed. I thought about not even posting the video, but I mean, I think we need some content right now. So what the heck, clearly I'm wrong about a lot. So I hope you all are doing your part to combat the pandemic. We're socially distancing. We're lucky in that we're able to still fly. I think they're still fueling up aircraft here at Troutdale Airport in near Portland, Oregon. I'm gonna take my son and we're gonna go for a quick flight, produce some more content. So that's the goal here is to keep the content coming, keep the spirits high, keep flying, and we'll get through this together. Hey, it's Steve, welcome back to Clear Direct. Well, it's March of 2020, we're well established into the new decade. The world is rightly concerned about a global pandemic called the coronavirus, and I'm here on Travis Air Force Base. I'm not quarantined myself, like the rest of the uh, Royal Princess cruise ship passengers are. Uh, I'm here for, well, it wouldn't be the Air Force if they didn't have to train you how to do something easy as retiring. Well, that's what I'm here for. I'm retiring in a few months and I'm learning how to retire. What's the world gonna look like in one, five, 10 years? Well, I'm gonna make some bold predictions about aviation and where it stands in 2030. Maybe we'll be able to look back on this video when I have a lot more gray hair and wrinkles and see if I was right with respect to general aviation, airlines, sustainability, UASs, and finally space. So another interesting, concerning global geopolitical uh, situation going on right now is Russia and Saudi Arabia are in a uh, oil battle. Prices are dropping. Yeah, might be a good thing. I'm sure airlines are probably buying up Jet A in bulk right now. I hope they are. So let's start off with sustainability, speaking of oil prices. They're down, they'll come back up. You know that everybody is still working on energy density and going towards electric. I think general aviation is going to be affected uh, by electricity or electric motors more than uh, commercial airlines. I think they're obviously looking at it, the airlines are. But as far as general aviation, I think trainer aircraft are gonna make big leaps this decade. And um, if your kid is uh, young now and they're growing up and they're probably gonna be getting their, their uh, license in an electric aircraft. I don't think that's too big of a leap that I'm making right there. Uh, other sustainability things I'm thinking about, CPDLC is gonna be something that the airline and FAA and, and ICAO start to leverage a heck of a lot more. GPS, weather prediction, artificial intelligence, traffic monitoring with ADS-B, et cetera, is gonna just increase efficiency and safety. What I mean by that is it's all gonna be fed toward to the air crew so they can refine not only their airspeed while flying, but also their takeoff time if they can to be able to arrive at the start of their arrival point, uh, 100 miles or so from the airport in the terminal area, and start their descent at a specific GPS hacked time so that we can sequence folks in and not have holding, wasting gas. We're gonna arrive at that, that point with more gas, so uh, it thereby affects both efficiency and safety. Gotta love those Normandy stripes. There's an F-15 with Normandy stripes at Kingsley Field. Okay, like I said, it's March 2020 now. The 737 MAX is still not certified to fly again. Uh, I think in a few months that's gonna happen. Pilots will obviously receive much more in-depth training on the MCAS system. All right, <laughs> I've been telling people that uh, have been asking me, are you afraid to start flying the 737 again? I go, I think that's gonna be the safest aircraft we've got. 2030, let's see, let's, let's prove me right. I think Boeing will eventually move on to their 757 successor, the 797. I don't think the 797 will be flying passengers yet, won't be certified because of the certification process. Guess what? It's gonna be a lot slower, a lot more in depth, uh, but it'll have flown. That's my, that's my prediction. The Delta Dagger. All right, pilot shortage. I think it's gonna do three things. Number one is I think the FAA and maybe even ICAO will raise the mandatory retirement age to 70, uh, excuse me, 67 and a half. I don't think 70 quite yet. But I think, I see that as a, a fairly good thing. You know, health 
is generally getting better, although I did hear that the US male lifespan is slightly decreased. So hopefully we catch back up and reverse that trend and ensure that 67 and a half is safe to do, number one, but also that'll help with the pilot shortage. It won't help with my seniority issue. Number two is a supply and demand thing. I think it'll increase pilot wages since the demand is going up. Go Alpa. And then number three is a bit more controversial. You know, in the next decade, there's gotta be some sort of conflict in the world that spikes oil prices. Um, and it's just gonna increase the rapidity with which airlines and aircraft manufacturers start investigating replacing the first officer in part 121 flying. I know, I said it, sorry. I don't think it's gonna happen by 2030. Hopefully it'll never happen. Um, but you gotta think at least they're gonna be start talking about it a lot more and researching it a lot more. And it'll create a lot of flight tech, heated flight tech conversations, not heated against each other because I think we're all on the same page with this one. But mark my words, it's gonna be a discussion uh, for the future. Over this next decade, I really hope we make some big strides in diversity in the skies. According to Women in Aviation International and the FAA, only 6.6% of US commercial pilots were women in 2019. I'm going to make a prediction that we get up to 10%. I want to see double digits. I hope at least 15% of pilots are women. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, only 3% of U.S. commercial pilots are African American. So let's get that north of 10% as well. Man, this voodoo has seen better days. All right, back to GA. I already talked about electric trainers. That's number one. That was in the sustainability section. Uh, number two is the FAA, I think will make big progress in certification process for light or civil aircraft. And this is again, kind of fingers crossed prediction is that I think the market or the FAA will change conditions for the market to produce finally a compelling four to six seat aircraft that will run on diesel and or jet A fuel. Again, that's a, that's a definite fingers crossed one, so let's do it. And then talking about fuel, will 100 low lead still be available? Yeah, uh, again, fingers crossed. I mean, I see the benefit of getting rid of it, but it affects me. I've got a 1958, you know, IO 470 that sure loves to burn that sweet, sweet 100 low lead. So it'll still be available, but we'll still be looking. I mean, the, the, the conversation, I, I don't think will continue on a, another type of boutique fuel. I think diesel and Jet A are, are here to stay and they'll be, the, they'll be the ones competing with electricity. Beach AT11, that's beautiful. If you haven't seen my vlog on a uh, travel, a travel vlog to Independence, Oregon, there's a, a sweet one of these sitting, sitting outside there. Check it out. So let me talk home builders, because that's, I hope to be one of you one day. I really hope that the conditions exist for an engine manufacturer to make a compelling small turboprop finally. 180 horse and a 350 horse I think would be two marketable sizes of those motors that burn Jet A. Um, next up for the home builders is 3D printers are here to stay, of course, and I think that they are going to help the home builders immensely, as well as the certified manufacturers. And then the last thing is I think kits, kit prices will continue to come down and be a little bit more rapidly developed. Shipping costs worldwide come down. I think they're, I think Lance Air, uh, at least when I visited them a few years ago, uh, when they were still in Redmond, Oregon, they were getting their large parts popped out of molds in the Philippines. Anyway, I think that's gonna continue to decrease costs as far as the availability of those materials because the, the, the demand is just so high uh, that, that uh, more and more manufacturers will be able to both produce the raw product as well as the manufactured product for the kits. All right, you UAS hobbyists, I'm with you. I'm one of you as well. Um, much to our chagrin, the FAA is going to mandate ADS-B out. Again, that's just a prediction, but I think it's inevitable. But I think there's unintended consequences with respect to safety. I think we may become more or overly reliant on that system. We may become complacent as pilots and figure, ah, oh, they're probably squawking, so I'll see them on my TCAS. And, you know, if an oper inoperative system uh, is out there and you schwack it, or the other thing is, yeah, we're gonna start alerting all sorts of TCASs. Descend, descend now. Because if we don't uh, adhere to the uh, national airspace system, both hobbyists as well as pilots. So, 
Stay safe out there, folks. All right, on into space. Falcon Heavy, I'm just excited about this decade in, sp in space, man. We're gonna send people to the moon. Um, hopeful we'll send some people to Mars by uh, the end of the decade. Um, I'd, okay, if I'm forced to make a prediction, no, I don't think we're gonna get there. That's glass half empty, Steve. Uh, but I don't think we're gonna get there. Um, Elon Musk is gonna be trying his damnedest. We'll be close, but we're not gonna be there in January 1st, 2030 to be specific. All right, it's getting a little long. Let me finish up. The last prediction is still in the space realm. Clearly, and this isn't a stretch, we're gonna get more and more satellites and it's gonna become increasingly packed. Uh, the new need now is uh, the Starlink uh, internet service, right? So deconfliction is gonna become even more necessary. And I think the UN will establish a coalition space alliance where they'll figure out the deconfliction. There will be participating members and non-participating members. I think we will run two satellites together. I think it will increase tensions to the brink of war. I don't think we're gonna go to war over it. I wanna be clear, I don't think we're gonna go to war over it. Uh, I would hope that the human spirit and intellect and reason will come forth. That's it, I'm done, I'm exhausted. Let me know in the comments what you think, what I miss, what I got right, what I got wrong, probably most of it. I do wanna say that uh, my heart goes out to everybody battling the global pandemic of COVID-19 right now. Uh, we're all in this together. We're gonna get through this, and whatever happens, don't stop flying. Till next time, you're cleared direct.